It's comic artist Pro Secrets, and I'm Ethan Van Skyver, comic book artist with 25 years experience, um, offering you guys, uh, my subs, a chance to send in four to six pages of sequential art, and uh, I'll look it over, give it a review, um, tell you where you might need to improve, and what you're doing right. Um, this is uh, number 16 of Brutally Honest Portfolio Review, so it's an incredibly popular series. Everyone loves it, um, and I'm getting a lot of submissions. Uh, this one is from a fellow named Gil, and he writes, uh, I'm a graphic designer living in the D.C. area. My wife is an Air Force officer, so we move around quite a bit. First off, I want to thank you for all the years of great art and comics. You deserve all the success and accolades that you have received. Your line work and draftsmanship are top-notch, and I really love your channel. Would be honored if you'd review my pages. Um, after putting... After years of putting this off, I finally completed the first issue of my self-published comic book, Night Stalker. Uh, we debuted it at Cleveland Wizard World a few weeks ago and sold out, so that's great. Um, so we're pretty excited, uh, but I know I still have much to learn and want to improve with each issue. Your art lessons are great and very informative, so thanks again. I really uh, appreciate it. Um, Gil, I really appreciate it too, so let's have a look at what you've uh, offered us here. Uh, it looks like, uh, eh, I hate when that happens. Looks like we've got about five pages. Uh, all right, wait, let's start over. All right, so it looks like Gil has started off with a, a nice establishing shot here uh, of the warehouse district. Interesting, he's put the lettering in. I guess this is from a completed issue. Um, okay. And then we move in on a truck, the back of a truck, and something is being offloaded. This is interesting here. I, the entire panel seems to be taken up with um, the trailer of this tractor trailer, and we've got just this sliver of a panel here and a guy taking a box off. Now that's, um, you know, that's unique. That's, that's kind of a bold choice. Uh, and then we have this and it looks like guys are offloading the boxes uh, down a long hallway, which is there. Uh, I got it. I mean, um, let's see. Let's let's go to the next page first. I wanna I wanna get the whole story, and then we'll go back and talk about each page. So we've got a shot of these gentlemen who are all smirking, and one of them's got a machine gun kind of pointed to the side. Trigger discipline. Get your finger off the trigger unless you're going to pull it. Everyone knows that. It's very dangerous. That's how accidents happen. Uh, brothers, my soldiers. Dude walks in from behind them. And we've got a guy in a suit. And a dude with green hair and a machine gun. That looks like Doc Samson from uh, the Hulk. Hulk comics. Another establishing shot here. All right. And then we cut to another scene, um, I guess on the roof. This is our hero. Those are the villains. Um, this is our hero, kind of a Batman, G.I. Joe kind of guy. Uh, running across some rooftops. And he stops to look in this overhead light. Yeah. So he's watching. Um, okay. I'm, we're, I'm, I will uh, go back and, and comment. I'm, I'm holding my, my comments. Um, all right, smashes through, and then we get a double page spread of utter chaos, a lot of fighting. All right, is that it? Yeah, that is it. Okay. All right, Gil. So, ooh, hey, how you doing? Um, all right, Gil. So, uh, a few things. Um, first of all, the first thing that really took my notice um, is... Uh, and this is okay. Again, uh, uh, you know, you're allowed to kind of draw your characters any way that you want. But I wonder if this is what you want to do. I wonder if you, if, if these doll eyes that you do, these long, kind of eyes, um, are the way you want to go. Um, uh, they just seem very strange. They, what they're ending up doing is they're pulling out the shape of the head into into this kind of strawberry shape. Um, because the skull is struggling to contain uh, these eyeballs. The, these eyes are huge. Now, I've said it before um, on these portfolio reviews. Um, 
we tend to, as human beings who are trying to draw ourselves, uh, we tend to exaggerate the things that uh, we connect to uh, about the way we look. So, you know, when, when we're talking to someone, we, we look them in the eyes, we notice their eyes. Um, and so, you know, the eyes, the, the soul is behind the eyes. So people, when they're drawing faces, will often exaggerate the eyes. I mean, you look at um, Egyptian hieroglyphics, and they did the same kind of thing. They just naturally exaggerated the eyes to the point where uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, this eyeball would be, you know, the, very, very big. It'd be the size of a baseball. Um, and you, he'd be trying to, to stuff these into his skull. It just it, it doesn't make any sense now stylistically it's something that you are consistent about so i look i look at um all of your pages and every time uh, a person is shown they have these gigantic eyes in their heads and speaking of egyptian hieroglyphics your eyes look the same from the front and from the side and that is something that we're going to have to work on um i, I want to encourage you to uh to fix that uh, i also want to encourage you to uh Follow my instructions when it comes to drawing uh, the human skull um, before you begin to make it into uh, a face. You're going to have to picture, you know, the, uh, the, the bony anatomy underneath this. And, and, and understanding that will help you place um, facial features in proper proportions. Um, and so, I mean, look, you, you know, you can't, like I said, these people are your puppets. Uh, you can draw them any way that you want, but it's strange that he looks fairly realistically drawn here. Uh, of course, we can't really see his eyes because they're covered up with these goggles, but I have to imagine if you peeled these goggles off, I don't think he'd have, you know, an eye like this. I just, I don't know. Uh, he's breaking into the roof. This is very cool. Uh, very, very cool. Very fun. Um, yeah, I just... Uh, all right, so I, that that's my main sticking point right now is the way you're drawing um, uh, the human skull, like a face with eyes. Uh, I just find it to be uh, troublesome. Um, so let's let's go through this again. First of all, uh, an eye is made up. You, you understand the eyeball is underneath this with the pupil, um, but the eye is made up of an uh, an upper lid. It's kind of shaped like this. I mean, you know, if you were really to, to just kind of uh, exaggerate the, you know, the shape, the lines that, you know, it's kind of a line here and a line there. And then a more round uh, kind of line for the under lid, like so. And this follows the shape of the eyeball. Okay. And this uh, kind of will open and close a lot more. So it... it it can change shape. This can get big. It can widen. Uh, it can close. But generally, this is kind of this is the shape of an eye. It people um, when they're kids, they draw eyes kind of like this. This just perfectly kind of symmetrical shape of an eye. Uh, that is a doll eye. Uh, it just it looks dead. It looks lifeless. Um, uh, this this shape is uh, you know. Uh, I don't know, it has more kind of human warmth to it. Because um, uh, it's believable. And you can place the eyelid however you want. You know, like this. Eyebrow. Alright, so um, that's that's from the front. Now from the side, uh, it actually becomes kind of a, uh, an equal than, uh, or a greater than or less than sign. Like this, right? That's what an eyeball looks from the side. It actually comes to a corner here. It comes to a point where the uh, eyelid actually, you know, they kind of meet. And here is the pupil. Oh, you'll notice this. This is interesting. I should point this out. When drawing an eye like this, let's, let's do that again. Let's repeat and let's talk you through it. So it's just an equal than, or, you know, or, I mean, not an equal than, a greater than or a less than sign, depending on which way we're headed. We want to draw a kind of round shape right there. And that is the eyeball sitting in there. Uh, and then we're going to draw the pupil like so. Now, you would think that this is the, I think this is the iris, that it would be sitting dead in the center. It's actually not. Like, the roundness of this, okay, 
the iris is kind of sitting right here. Look how close that is to, uh, to the edge of the pupil. It's, it's all the way back here. And we can kind of draw it out a little bit. But that's what it looks like in 3D. It's almost like a, you know, a design inside of a marble. Um, you don't want to put it way out here in the front. That's not correct. You want to actually tuck it backwards like this. Um, have a nice kind of underlid. Here's the, you know, the eyelid up, up top. All right. So the, you know, these are the shapes. These are the basic shapes that you you should you know work on to uh, to understand how to draw an eye from the front and from the side. Um, this is not okay. Like you wouldn't want to take an eye um, from the front. I'll just draw that again real quick. Okay. You wouldn't want to take an eye and draw it from the front like so, and then just kind of immediately turn it into a profile. Like here's you know here's his nose. <laughs> I mean that is. That's an Egyptian hieroglyphic, like the way that that's done. Instead, you would rather put that there. That just seems to make more sense. Um, we've gone over um, skull drawing lessons in the past many times. Um, please, uh, please do bear that in mind when you are um, when you are drawing a human head. I, I you know, I don't want to see these kind of. Um, and and uh, you know, this is the thing. If you look at those dolls, I'm like adjust this and get it back to where it's supposed to be. If you look at like Bratz dolls and things, they have the same kind of problem, wherein they, they make the eyes so big in the head, uh, on the face, that like the skull or the shape of the head necessarily becomes shaped kind of like an apple or a strawberry. Like it's gotta be a whole lot thicker, uh, wider around the top than it does at the chin. And it, you know, um, yeah. It, when, you, when, you, when you lose uh, proportions, on one thing, kind of everything else falls apart. So it's a good idea to um, uh, to try to stay true as much as possible. Um, this bit of story, uh, storytelling, as I mentioned before, kind of surprised me. Uh, it is a little bit dead on, like a little bit straight on. Like this looks kind of, when you have this kind of a flat um, square or rectangle panel that's just sitting there dead on, and it, it's it's parallel to the the panel borders. What it actually kind of ends up doing is it, this kind of looks like it's a title of a story. It kind of looks like it's a banner within the comic book itself. Uh, it doesn't really look so much like a tractor trailer sitting there. It just you have to kind of your eye immediately says, "Hey, this is this looks like it's actually." part of the construction of the page rather than an image within the page. How could you fix that? I mean, tilt it to an angle, uh, you know, um, or something like that. I actually admire uh, this strategy here of just showing this much action, like all of this panel is truck, and then this tiny little sliver of light here contains a person moving a crate. Uh, I admire that. That for some reason that makes me think of something like like somebody like Greg Capullo would do. It's almost funny. Uh, most people would would kind of use the entire panel length of the panel to show what you're showing here, which is um, men uh, moving the boxes. Lots of men moving boxes. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, instead you've done that, and I think that's kind of uh, endearing. Um, uh, yeah, I, again, you've, this is an easy thing to do. I guess it kind of works. You've got, you know, all these faces together. Um, they're smirking. It looks like they're scheming. I don't know what's up with this guy's mouth here. Um, uh, we see one guy with a gun. We see a, a little piece of a gun here. So you're kind of uh, suggesting that these guys are all armed without actually having to draw too many guns. Uh, I'm, you know... Due to the, the cartoony nature of your drawing style, I'm not going to be too critical here, but that doesn't look like a gun, really. Um, that magazine is entirely too big. Like, I, I don't know. You, you, you're going to need to get uh, some photo reference and spend a little more time working on the guns or people will <laughs> people will kind of give you heck about it. Uh, yeah, this back here is interesting. It's like he comes in through the shadows and he looks like Let's see here. Is the perspective about right? I mean, eh, you know, okay, more or less. Uh, he looks like a big kind of sentinel style figure here. And then the lights come down and he's this little guy. He, he's very small. Um, he, you know, if you actually do the eight head rule, 
on him. And eight heads are really for superheroes. I mean, if you're going to draw Captain America, like super heroic physique, you use the eight head rule. Um, but this guy is one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe six and a half heads. So he's kind of small and he's proportioned like a child. Uh, in other words, um, the way the eight head rule works is if this is one head, count down another head, that should be about like across his chest right there. So that's, that's like where his rib cage is. That's where you put it. it, it that should be his chest. Uh, and then kind of another head down and then another head down should be right around his crotch line. So obviously we're, we, we're dealing with a guy who's, uh, you know, not at all super heroically proportioned. Um, and also, uh, well, if you intend him to be short, that's fine. Uh, he is very, very short. Um, his suit, uh, again, you're going to have to get, you're going to have to start using reference. Even if you're doing cartoony stuff, uh, this is easy to do. If, look for a man in suit and, you know, um, learn how to draw the wrinkles and the folds. Learn how a suit actually hangs on a man. It doesn't, I mean, most suits don't really hug the form this way. Um, I, I would go back and, and be careful in the future. I mean, that's what photo reference is for. Uh, most people can't do this out of their heads right away. It takes a little time. Um, look at the size of this gun here. And the guy's not playing around. Reference your guns, please. It's an interesting looking gun. It, it gets the point across, but yeah, that, that I mean, the magazine here is gigantic. It's enormous. I don't know. Uh, eh, all right, I'm not thrilled with that. It gets better here though. I, I you know, this guy's head is great. Um, we've, we're attempting three point perspective here and we're not, we're not getting it right. Um, uh, you've got a nice overhead shot, um, kind of bird's eye, the horizon line is up here and it's, okay, so we've got one point and then we've got two points, but you're not really using it quite right. I mean, these, you know, you're faking it and you, it shows, um, it, it shouldn't be that difficult. Please do go and utilize my, um, perspective lessons, um, to learn how to do two and three point perspective. It'll really help. Um, you run into trouble here, especially with these bricks. I mean, this brick here is half the size of his body. Uh, and that is due to you faking perspective. Don't fake it, get it right. It's easy. Uh, good shot here. Uh, don't like this. Great shot here. This might be the best panel. These two um, of your hero are the best panels in the book. Can't complain about that. That looks really cool. Um, uh, won't complain about this. I'd actually, you know, I actually feel like you, you went a little conservative on the glass here. I'd like to see more bits and shards and pieces of glass. I mean, it's going to take all day to do, but yeah, it looks cool when you do it. You know, when you actually spend time drawing the broken glass. Um, it's weird to me how his mouth fits perfectly in here. <laughs> like, I don't think his mouth is that big and it's a little bit low on his face. His head is tilted downward, so his mouth would kind of be up here a little bit more. Uh, and this is making it look like it's, I don't know, the guns are, are pulling at his face in some way and making him grimace. Um, let's see, uh, kind of a Spider-Man panel here. I don't, I guess he's flipping. Uh, I like the way you blurred out the bad guys with guns down here. I think that's pretty cool. And then we've got your big uh, double page spread. Um, yeah, with lots and lots of action. Uh, these guys, some are looking up, some are, some aren't. Um, what happened? Where is he? Why aren't they all kind of looking in the same direction and reacting with swift alarm and uh, action? Uh, they should be. It's confusing. Um, let's see. What is going on here? We've got his head. His neck is broken here. Isn't it? It kind of is. Um, yeah. yeah. It looks okay. I mean, this is all very exciting. Good work. Perspective is wonky because some of these people, are, are they sitting on tables? or the, what, are, what are they doing? Um, yeah, the background, the boxes in the background don't really fit into anything. It is a shame since most of this is uh, people filling up the entire page, but yeah, you still need to do your, um, uh, one, and then, 
too. This is kind of, oh, I did this thing where I uh, explained what fake three-point perspective is. And this is a fake three-point perspective opportunity. Um, basically, it's two-point perspective turned on its side. So you would have a vanishing point right here, right where this kick is. You call this the horizon line, which it is because you've got this guy's head, this guy's head, and more or less your horizon line is right here, which doesn't really explain all these people that are this, uh, you know, I would, I would say they're on, standing on tables or something. Horizon line here, vanishing point here, go straight up from that, another vanishing point. Wait a second, what is going on here? This is kind of one point perspective that you've done. Eh, you've done one point perspective here. Uh, but I still think that um, uh, you could um, put a vanishing point right up here, like I'm, I'm off the page, but right up here as well, and then just do horizontal parallel lines all the way up, and you would get a pretty neat effect of uh, for action uh, like this. Um, it's, it's good though. I mean, you know, Gil, nice work. Um, I, I, your, your face has really bugged me though. You've got to work on that. Uh, you start using photographs. Um, and seriously, when you have to draw people in the background like this, uh, start looking at photographs, just call up just random images of people, uh, on Google and start being influenced by, uh, different styles of faces. Um, start trying to, to draw people to look a little bit more individual and believable. I think that would really, really help your work. Um, Gil, thank you for your submission. Congratulations on um, uh, selling out your first issue of Night Stalker. Um, good work. Let's keep going. Let's get better with the next issue. I believe you can do it. Um, hey, so this is Comic Artist Pro Secrets, Brutally Honest Portfolio Reviews. If you would like to have your portfolio reviewed like I just reviewed Gil's, um, why don't you email it to Ethan, E-T-H-A-N, 12032 at gmail.com. Um, or you can uh, DM it to me on Twitter, at Ethan Van Skyver. Uh, I, I do not need to follow up. I might respond to your email. I might not. That doesn't mean anything. Um, I just kind of push all these into a folder, and I pull one out at random. So uh, everyone has an equal chance of being reviewed. Um, uh, okay, so I want to thank you guys for all your support. Thank you for um, liking this video. If you do like this video, please do click like. Um, please do subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. Um, you'll get notified. You'll get a little message that says that Comic Artist Pro Secrets has a new video uh, that was just uploaded. So you'll be able to see it first. You'll also get uh, alerts to when I go live and do a live chat. You can join me and ask me questions um, live. Um, also, uh, thank you to everyone who's donated to the Patreon. Uh, if you haven't yet and would like to, uh, the link will be in the description below. And thanks to everyone who donates Super Chats in um, the live chat. It really helps this channel um, grow, and I do appreciate you. All right, guys. Thanks. See you next time. It's no secret at all that I couldn't do this channel if it wasn't for support from you, my subscriber base, and my Patreon donors. If you'd like to join this community by pledging a dollar or more per month, go check out the link in the description below. And I thank you.